do you guys think this is a big issue? And are they still ceilinged as a team with having CJ, having Dame? They're not the best defenders. Uh, Nurkic isn't the best defender. They got Hoodie Mello off the bench. Who's not a good defender? Cantor. And this Cantor is maybe the worst defender who's a big man. Although the man snags offensive boards, there comes a point where it's not valuable. Um, so they still struggle heavily with defense. Do you guys still think that this does really much for their overall ceiling or fate? No. And I think the Portland Trailblazers need to make some massive changes this offseason. I'm sick of seeing this happen to Damian Lillard. So let me put out some facts here. Until they, they got Robert Co- Robert Covington, when they acquired him this year, is the first teammate Damian Lillard has played with that's made an all-NBA defensive team. The first. I mean, you look at Damian Lillard's counterpart, Steph Curry, not to make this a Dan versus Steph conversation. Clay Thompson, all-NBA defender. Andre Iguodala, all-NBA defender. Uh, Kevin Durant, all-NBA defender. Draymond Green, defensive player of the year. Andrew Bogut is an above average defensive player. So those are the kinds of players he's played with. That's one thing. Two, I, I hate the Blazers style. It's just high pick and roll, high pick and roll, high pick and roll. Dame, CJ, high pick and roll. Dame, CJ, high pick and roll. And really the reality of what happens is that when you play a good playoff team that traps the pick and roll, i.e. the Warriors, they trapped it with Klay Thompson and Draymond Green, and you force Dame to get the ball out of his hands, the Blazers offense dies. Like, okay, I can see a scenario where Carmelo Anthony gives you one game where he just gives you 30, but it's not sustainable. I mean, they had a playoff run where their two starting wings were Mo Harkless and Alfred Rucamino, and if you trap the pick and roll, the Blazers' offense died. And uh, you look at it like that, and I, I just don't understand their style. And when the pick and roll is getting trapped, they do nothing. I mean, you look at when they lost to the – everybody blames Dame when they lost to the Pelicans. If you play high pick and roll basketball – And Drew Holiday is one of the best perimeter defenders in the NBA, especially at that time. And you're going against Anthony Davis, who's maybe the best pick and roll defensive player in the NBA. And what you're doing is running high pick and roll against them every single time. What do you think is going to happen? You're going to struggle to score the basketball. And Damian Lillard had one of the worst series of his career. So stylistically, I have a problem with that. We've gotten to the defense, right? I think the defense is a problem around Damian Lillard because Damian Lillard himself is uh, not as maybe an average defender, if you want to say the average is a large spectrum in the NBA, but he's not a good defender. The problem is that CJ McCollum is also an average to slightly above average defender. And CJ McCollum offensively, while he's got a very pretty game that requires a ton of offensive skill, he's got a great handle. He's great with both hands. He's got a floater. He's got a mid-range game. He's clearly worked on his game. He lacks the high-end athleticism and the ability to take over a game when Damian Lillard is getting trapped and the ball is getting out of his hands. And that's where I think Portland at some point needs to get away from this two-big-man approach with Zach Collins, Nurkic, get some smaller faster defensive talent with ability to switch get some more shooting around these guys I think Norman Powell makes is a good move in that into in that direction and they need I think they I think at some point Terry Stotts needs to go like if you remember for Steph Curry again not a Dame versus Steph conversation but Mark Jackson I mean we see him on TV all he wants to do is play high kick and roll basketball and that's all he did with Steph Curry and Steve Kerr bringing in a little bit of motion changed Steph Curry's career because it altered the spots that he was able to get his shots and put less pressure on him to dictate the entire offense. And I think that Terry Stotts is a little bit of Damian Lillard's Mark Jackson here. And I would appreciate if they got a new coach and they got an influx of new talent. Otherwise, I think as good as Damian Lillard is, I think they'll always be a four four to six team in the West that loses after one playoff win. And maybe in a weaker West, they go to the Western Conference Finals or something. Mm, Know what you think. I agree. I think, um, I mean, that was a good amount of detail by the man Vish, but I think it's just not a winning formula that the Blazers are, are, are making. And I think it really stems on defense. They got Covington, who was a good defender, but their first one, he's still pretty old. So if it, if I'm looking at their team, unless Derek Jones Jr. becomes Dennis Rodman, I don't I don't see them going that far in the playoffs. Unless like unless I mean Dame can catch fire, which we all have seen and, and, and he's done. But if you can't get it done on both ends of the floor, you're not going to hang with contenders. So I think it comes down to that. What what about you, Blake? Yeah. So like off a of vicious point, every time you watch a late late game trailblazers it is the most back back and forth basketball of dame hitting a 30 footer and then the other team either bricking shots hitting a three no sorry 
They're either hitting a three, hitting an open jump shot, or they're getting an offensive rebound and doing the same back thing, same thing back in either dunking or layup. Like so back and forth, like late game scenarios, they are just not good. Um, it's almost like they're just, you know, hitting their head against the wall and trying to break it or something. Like they keep doing the same thing over and over. And I think to Vicious point, like at some point, like you just gotta you gotta do something else. Like it's just not working. It, it's proven time and time again that it's not working. Um and please get a big man for the for the Trailblazers that is like above average on defense. Say what you want about Hassan Whiteside. I know he gets the blocks and stuff, um, but I'm still not willing to say he's one of you know a really really good defender here. Um, and whether that's getting rid of Nurkic or Cantor, like either or, like they need to get some defense to help at center because right now teams are just scoring on him at will. Yeah, and. I, th- I think the larger point also is that stylistically there it's it's the words out on how you stop the Portland Trailblazers and everybody wants to say oh Dame sucks in the playoffs Dame sucks in the playoffs well if you run high pick and roll basketball if you run pick and roll 50 times in a game and 40 times Dame gets trapped and he's making the correct basketball decision to pass out of it and not force anything and you have nobody else that can create any offense well, then what is Dame really supposed to do in the playoffs? So stylistically, they have no adjustment when you trap the high pick and roll. I mean, you look at them this year, I think their record is a little over, is is really, it's just Dame. Because the reality of it is that the, every game's a close game and Damian Lillard is having one of the greatest clutch regular seasons we've ever seen. I mean, in terms of clutch percentage, any advanced metric you want to look at Damian Lillard in the clutch, what he's doing is just insane. Like every game is close and then Damian Lillard hits a massive three from 35 feet and the Blazers win. That's not a sustainable way to play. And one thing I do want to see is I feel like there's too many veterans on that team, like Robert Covington, who's clearly lost a step both on offense and defense. Melo is effective when he plays, but he's still a poor defender. So if Melo's giving you two on one end, he's probably giving up two on the other end. It's always been the case with him. And so I feel like Nasir Little, when he's played, the little time he's been able to play, he shows something because he's he's got the skill set to be a guy that plays power forward or, yeah, a power forward in a small ball setup that can switch across the board because he's got high-level athleticism. He shot the ball decently when he's played, so that's one guy I'd like to see more of. And then Anthony Simons, to me, has the physical profile to be a good defensive player. He shot the ball extremely well. I'd like to see his minutes get up. I, I'm so sick of seeing, well, when they're healthy, Nurkic and Zach Collins play 30, 35 minutes a night. There's no use of playing two seven-footers in today's NBA with all the switching. Yeah, yeah. yeah. One thing I, I would just jump in there. I just have a quick question for you two. And I'm sure you're familiar with the TNT crew. So Charles Barkley, the man, the myth, earlier in the season predicted the Trailblazers will win it all. He said this, knowing all the stuff we've talked about. What does it say about Barkley's credibility? Like, can we take this man serious? What, like, what, what do we think of this take? What are your boys' thoughts? Uh, I can go first. I, sure, go ahead. He said this the last like four years. I think <laughs> saying it every time. Every time, it's I really like the uh, I really like the tra- Trailblazers coming in. And in 2019, I think they hyped him up a little too much when they made it to the Western Conference Finals, and he was like you know, on his high horse, they did get swept. They blew a 10 point lead in the third quarter. I I think probably every single game, um, even from a weekend warriors teams, I, I don't know. Chuck's funny in that sense. And I'd expect next year, you're going to hear the exact same rhetoric and how the trailblazers are new and improved. Uh, so I'll be looking out for that next off season for sure. Yeah. First of all, inside the NBA is a fantastic show and and mm-hmm. they definitely have a ton of insight. They do offer it. But for whatever reason, Charles Barkley is infatuated with the Portland Trailblazers. It's not even Damian Lillard. I think it's the fact that they still are willing to trot out a true power forward and center. It reminds Chuck of his er- his era. But for whatever reason, every season, he guarantees, hey, let me tell you, earn it, earn it. The Portland Trailblazers, they're going to win the championship. I remember in 2019, bro. The Portland Trailblazers were down 15 at half to the Oklahoma City Thunder. This is Paul George's MVP candidacy candidacy year. And you guys know I'm a big Russell Westbrook fan. So I'm watching inside the NBA, my eyes glued to the TV, expecting them to say something nice about Russ and Paul George and what they were doing. Because the Thunder were the third seed in the West at the time. And they're up 15 against a good Portland Trailblazers team. No. Instead, Chuck goes, hey, hey, let me tell you. I I love the way these Portland Trailblazers are playing. I guarantee 
that they're going to win. So he, he does that. I mean, he has an infatuation with the Trailblazers for whatever reason. I think you can win a championship 100% with Damian Lillard. I think I, I, there's no doubt about that. I think that he's a special, special player that will, might never get the appreciation in terms of legacy for how special he is if they just continue playing this style with putting these kinds of teams around him. Yeah, no, I mean, uh, Charles, Charles is a funny guy. I love Charles, but some of his <laughs> takes, I think, a little bit, little bit iffy, to say the least. So I was definitely curious your boy's thoughts on uh, the Barkley man. Sure. 